Hey guys, this is the Counting Nightmare, and welcome to the final mission of Devil May Cry 2. This is Lucia's mission at 13. Now something that I didn't actually notice for some reason is it, it is misspelled character select. It is misspelled, that was pointed out by GUI in the thread. So I've been farming mission 9, which is the Arius fight, and we're ready for mission 13. More repeated cutscenes here, we've seen these. Dante. Arius? It seems I have to finish him off myself. Right. So Arius just kind of comes out of nowhere just just after Dante has left and oh yeah yeah whatever anyway mission 13 we can finish off our purple orbs something really handy is that every time you buy a purple orb at the start of the mission you get to start the mission with a full trigger gauge that's something I didn't actually take notice of until just recently it's very handy because usually you start a mission with no trigger so it helps quite a bit. The path to forgiveness is clean with blood. Forgiveness, okay. Who needs to be forgiven? This is possessed Arius. He's annoying. He is completely different to his other fire. Completely different. He has none of the same moves. Let's get in and do some damage. Chrono Heart! As you can see, the Chrono Heart works quite nicely on him. Now, the thing about Possessed Arius is you need to be careful when you're getting close with him. Cranky Bombs are good to use on him because they give you shit loads of Devil Trigger. I do mean shit loads, look at that. It's crazy. Once you get used to throwing the cranky bombs, they're not that hard. Arius is a nice target for them. If they impact the target, they explode immediately. Let's do some more oh, damage. As you can see, he has very, very quick attacks in the melee. That's why you want to be careful. And those spheres are really annoying. He keeps generating those throughout the whole fight. Normally he only has like two of them flying around, but on harder difficulties he's got tons of them. They can be exploded with the cranky bombs, but you still gotta watch out for them. They, they are very annoying. And their damage does rack up by the end of the fight. So when he starts floating in the air, he's gonna do a large attack. Either that one, or a big beam. The best way to avoid it is to go under him. And Try to get behind him, because the beam will track you. The other attack isn't very dangerous, but the beam attack he has is quite painful. Let's see if he does the beam attack for us. Nope, doing that one again. You can probably outrange that one, but uh, you cannot outrange the beam, and you can't tell which one he's doing until he actually does it. This is a nice opportunity to melee attack him when he's belly flopped on the ground like an idiot. He would have got that one off even through the Chrono Heart, I think. There's the beam. That's why you want to get behind him. That's got quite a range on it. It does quite a lot of damage, too. Because it'll catch you in it for quite a few hits. I've actually got a showtime going here. I'm gonna, yeah, I just jinxed myself. Didn't I? Yep. That was just... I just jinxed that completely. Don't want to use up all my trigger. So we get behind him. Watch out for those goddamn spheres. Get behind him. Yes, yeah, so you can see he's trying to track me with that. 
you can see the explosions from the cranky bomb will take out a lot of those spheres. Not all of them though, so you gotta keep an eye out. There's the beam again. There's uh, a couple of little green orbs floating around. I might go grab one actually. There's one over here. When he's charging at you, he has several different attacks he can do. He's got like a belly flop. He's got that punch. The punch is easy to, to dodge. What's he doing? Belly flop. If you try to jump to avoid that, you'll get hit. So you want to dodge. And that move is pretty rare, but when he does it, it can be surprising. He hasn't exactly got a good aim with it, but it is surprising. So you want to, you don't want to be too far from him because if you're too far, you'll have trouble getting behind him when he sets up his beam attack. And you don't want to be too close because his melee attacks are very sudden and unpredictable. Now we avoid this attack. Pretty easy to avoid once you get used to it. See how quickly the cranky bombs build up that trigger. Isn't that wonderful. About, took out about four spheres with that bomb. I'm a bit close here. Need to be careful. I'm using uh, Lucia for this fight because all oh, her cranky bombs are beautiful here, honestly. Well, that attack is annoying to dodge. Being in the air is the best way to dodge it. I'm trying to, to just roll. You often get you hit. hand tentacle things come out of the ground. They're tentacles, aren't they? Because he's already got hands. Yeah. They're tentacles. Come out of the ground to catch you. Another great opportunity to attack. The Chrono Heart. This is a good boss to demonstrate how dangerous the Chrono Heart can be against bosses. Most bosses in the game, that's how useful it is against them. You just you just tear them up. If you feel like item spamming, you can pop devil stars over and over and over and refill your trigger. And keep the boss in Chrono Heart forever until he dies. That's what S ranking missions often uh, consist of, because your penalty for using items is actually extremely low. Yeah, this game's ranking system is weird. <laughs> it's weird. I'm a bit close here. Oh, that was close. Rip into him. Also, in my last Lucia mission, which was number 12, I mentioned that someone mentioned that Lucia's DT attack is good against just Magia, but I forgot who it was. That was LDK Spy. I'm just mentioning that because I don't like saying, hey, someone said this really useful thing, but I forgot who it was. I feel guilty. So that was LDK Spy. I don't know how I forgot it was him, because he's quite a big DMC fan. He even started the DMC 4 or 3. Yippee. Bit cornered there. <laughs> Only got hit by the end of that attack, thankfully. I want to end this fight with a decent amount of trigger to it. Oh, he, yeah, he got an attack off even while I was Corona Harding. His melee attacks are pretty unpredictable and dangerous. It's also quite dangerous when he decides to do this near the edge of the arena. He's over just far enough right now, but if he was any closer to the edge, I'd have trouble getting behind him. And then I'd probably get caught by his beam. Which is... it is dangerous. It's more dangerous than, it, than you might think it might be. So something to wonder about is... Well, this game has, a, it has no idea how to tell a story. And the last time we saw Lucia in her mission, she was up the top of the tower, right? And she walked in an Arius during the end of his ritual. And now she's suddenly down here? So, what? What What did she do in the tower? What exactly was she climbing the tower for? If she reached the top and then suddenly she's down the bottom again? Did she even do anything? What was the point of those rehashed missions? I 
mean, did she see Dante? Did she watch Dante fighting Arius or something? Did she just like stand there and watch? I don't know. It, it, it's. I mean, this game has a lot of holes, but that's that's one hole in particular that's quite confusing. Just one minute she's at the top of the tower, next she's down here. I just don't get it. The Devil May Cry 2. I don't get it. I'm getting pretty low on health here. Maybe I'll use the uh, healing heart. Yeah, that's a rare attack too. <laughs> he just rips up part of the frickin' ground. Of course, the ground is undamaged. It's pretty fun. Spam him with bombs. Ooh, when he does that, that cry, you'll want to get out of his way. Because he'll charge at you, and if he catches you, he'll grab you with that mouth on his chest. And he'll drain your health. It can drain quite a lot of health. And um, last time I tried, I couldn't trigger out of it. So you don't want to get caught by that. It does give quite a bit of warning for it. It's one of the main things to watch out for in this fight. I do have quite a bit of trigger, so I'm going to heal a bit more. There we go, he's in the red. The strange thing about the belly flop is if you jump way up when he's still on his way to get to you, he won't actually do the belly flop, he'll just stop. It's like he's actually smart enough to realise that he's not going to hit you. So he just stops. <laughs> he's actually got a bit of a brain. About time we rack up some more damage. I think this is about the best health I can get. I should be fine. No, oh, this is a bit of a tedious boss. It comes down. <laughs> Just a monster! A monster that I created! Dante told me. Devils never cry! Lucius, final boss, Arius Argosax. Okay. Well, it was quite an epic looking fight. And switching my hearts. Aerial heart. And I think I'll go with offense. I should be able to keep myself out of trouble long enough to finish this. If there's ever a boss to use Lucius DT attack on, it's this one. Do it again. Tons of damage. So, Arius Argosax, does that mean that he's like. How can he be part Argosax? Because Dante is fighting Argosax in Demon World right now, isn't he? Or what's going on? 
I do not know. I am confused. Maybe that's why Argus, like, the chaos is so messed up because maybe he's partly here. I am very confused. So this boss is, uh, it can be irritating to dodge. <laughs> Some of its attacks are really, really tricky to dodge. Yeah, they have almost no warning. Like there's an attack where he grabs you with his mouth and has like no warning to it. You're lucky to dodge that one. And you can't trigger out of it either, it's, it's annoying. You can run under it if it gets too close. That's something that uh, you might not realise until you've done this fight a few times. But as you can see, his health is down a lot, so this is going to be over pretty quick. Beautiful damage. That tail is very tricky to avoid. It rushes around quite randomly. You need to be careful of that. It's backing up towards us. Just need to get up. Just need to get my trigger up to a point where I can actually trigger, then I can attack him again. It's a very bad spot to sit while attacking him. I was getting a multi hit with this tail, but we can finish him now. You must not worry, my dear. I am sure that he will return. Everything is just as it was with Sparta. my dear. Both sides are heads. Heads, I go. Tails, you go. It tricked me. That much of... the credits. So that is the end of the game as Lucia and we've already finished the game as Dante so we've finished. Isn't that satisfying? I find that really satisfying. This LP isn't quite over. I do have a bunch of bonus videos I want to post. First off there's a bloopers rule I want to make. That, that won't take very long because there weren't that many bloopers. I mean not compared to my first LP. My first Devil May Cry bloopers reel was about 50 minutes long, edited. Uh, this time around, there are only like four deaths, I think. Most of the bloopers are silly little things like not being able to jump on a platform or whatever. So I think that says a, a lot about this game. But anyway, I'll put, it, I'll put that together. They won't include my secret room deaths though, they're going to be part of the secret room videos. Another video I want to make is a... I want to demonstrate the bloody palace. Because this is the first Devil May Cry game that actually had one. And it's very different from number 4's bloody palace. And it's kind of like number 3's, but a little duller. But I'll, I'll show it off, I won't play it for very long. I'll just show what it's like. And then there's the secret room videos, there's going to be three of them. And they're, they're, I'm still editing them together. But they'll be along, and then the thread will be done. We've finished this. So thank you all for watching. I mean, I know it hasn't been easy to watch at some points because this game is pretty dull. So thank you for watching. Now, the question on your mind is probably what I'm going to LP next. It's either going to be number three or number four. I'll say either because I haven't decided if I'm going to do three yet. I'm definitely going to LP number four. That game will make a really good LP, I think. And I really like this ending music. All of the Devil May Cry's have good ending music, I think. 
Your number four will make a great LP. It's got great cutscenes, it's got an interesting story, it's got fun gameplay mechanics. Dante Must Die mode is like the perfect difficulty. Well, it could be a little harder. Some of the bosses are a bit of a pushover, but it's more like Devil May Cry 1 than it is like number 2 or 3. And yes, we know that Diesel put some money into this game. Shut up. Anyway. But uh, the problem with number 4 is that there is no fresh character option for Dante Must Die mode, so I'm going to work around that somehow. I think I'm going to run through the game without collecting any blobs or anything. Then do a Dante Must Die mode run without using any weapons before I would get them, so it would be a pretend fresh character run. I like fresh character runs because they introduce abilities and such in the order that the game wanted them to be introduced, and they still show off the high difficulty. Number three, I need to put more time into that. And once I've now that I've finished this game, I'm going to shelf it, and I'm going to play the hell out of number three. Then, once I've finished it on Data Must Die Mode a few times, I'll decide if I'm going to LP it. So if, if I do, it'll be quite a while away. My job is hunting devils. Devils never cry. I know. He did the same thing. But... Sparta did come back. Mission clear. We just see. We'll save that over here. We definitely don't need that file anymore. Let me get a gold orb for finishing on uh, Lucia must die mode. Not Dante must die mode. Lucia. And we can check our total results. And I somehow got a couple A's here. I don't remember it. It might have been while I was farming red orbs. I think it was actually. Another true king of hell picture. You get those just for finishing it on Dante Must Die mode on this game. In number one, you only got it if you finished with uh, all S ranks. I don't think it had to be on Dante Must Die mode, but you had to finish with all S ranks to get the king of hell picture. But this game has. It just hands them out for finishing on the highest difficulty. It has different pictures for each costume. I'm going to show those now. I grabbed them. Well, the, actually, the site I meant to grab them from is currently down, and that was a real shame. So I went and grabbed them myself by running through the final missions over and over using items. So I sliced through them in like three minutes. Anyway, while I'm showing you that, I'll tell you about my upcoming secret room videos. There's going to be three of them. There's going to be 20 secret rooms per video. It's going to be two Dante, one Lucia. And they're going to be edited very, very mercilessly. I'm going to slice out anything I think might be slightly boring. Because the main reason I'm doing it is I want to show you what's actually in the secret rooms. Some of them can be quite a shock. And um, I, kind of, I kind of respect them for that because... It's the only time while playing a Devil May Cry game I actually felt really anxious. I felt really anxious every time I was about to enter a secret room. So I've got to applaud them for that. And um, here's a nice little example of what I'm talking about. I'm glad these don't all attack you at once. Alright, wave two, wave two, wave two. Fudges! Fuck! Holy shit! Okay. Okay. Oh. Jeez, okay. What am I gonna do here? 
gonna get blasted with fire. That's when that. That's nice. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff that secret rooms have in store. So that's why I'm gonna show that to you. Apart from that, we're finished. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next LP. This was a counting nightmare. Goodbye.